the idea that we're going to send in offensive equipment and have planes and tanks and trains uh, going in with American pilots and American crews, just understand, and uh, don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say, that's called World War III, okay? Let's get it straight here, guys. Today, I'm announcing that the United States will be sending 31 Abram tanks to Ukraine. Okay, well, that's awkward now, isn't it? Joining me now, help me make some sense of this, Brian Dean Wright, whose President's Daily Brief podcast is killing it, who doesn't want all the news of the day in less than 20 minutes. Very, very proud of you, one, brother. Two, okay, uh, Brian, is it World War III? It obviously seems like an escalation. At the same time, it doesn't seem like that many tanks, but we are sending tanks. What, what's going on? Yeah. So here's the bottom line. Last winter and spring, the United States, the CIA and the Pentagon in particular, assumed that basically any kind of war material going to the Ukrainians could result in some degree of massive response by the Russians. And so we just sort of put our little toes in the water with, you know, very modest amounts of drones and some weaponry, some flak jackets and helmets. But then even with that very modest amount of material, the Russians didn't respond. No real sabotage operations, no you know bombing of any of uh, you know American interests abroad, and so that showed the CIA and the CIA or the Pentagon rather that look actually we can do a little bit more. Let's keep pressing the red line. Let's see if we can find it, and so that's what we have been doing now for about 10, 11 months, and that's why these tanks are yet the latest addition to this escalatory calculus of hey, Russia hasn't done anything so far, so let's keep pushing the envelope. Now we've got some tanks, maybe some planes, but boy, oh boy, isn't that risky? We're, we're, we're throwing the dice on this because we don't know when that red line will be. And the guy that we're trying to push, Vladimir Putin, well, he's got a nuclear you know, arsenal that if we go too far, we could have some very serious problems. So we're playing a big, big game here. Joe Biden was right last uh, winter and spring, and he's just pressing his luck. Okay, we'll deal with the potential problems in a second. Let's deal with something you just said. He hasn't responded yet. He hasn't responded yet. He hasn't responded yet. Because I've been waiting for this too. Now, you're much more educated on this stuff than I am, but I was expecting cyber. I was actually expecting more cyber attacks by now because I know the Ruskies do that pretty well. But there hasn't yeah. been something significant yet, as you just pointed out. Why do you think that is? I know you can't crawl into Putin's brain, but I've been waiting for it. I haven't seen it yet. Why hasn't it come? Well, I think two things. One, there has been a little bit. We've seen, like, for instance, in Germany, there were some sabotage operations of the rail lines there, probably Russian. We've seen a little bit in the United States, but you're right, not to the scale that most of us expected. And I think there are probably two reasons for that. First, I think that the, the NSA probably went in and damaged a lot of uh, the, the uh, Russians' abilities last January and February. We do have some data to suggest open source, that is to say, in the open press, the NSA actually did that. So that's, I think, part of it. The other is that I think Putin is keeping his powder dry on this. I think that he's waiting for the moment to unleash the, the big guns. And he doesn't think that the risk of when he does that, you know, he could face a degree of reaction and escalatory response by the United States and the West. So he doesn't want to take us off too much either. So he thinks that he can sort of wrap this war up in Ukraine without exacting a major cost to himself, that blowback for, for Russia. So that's why I suspect he's being cautious himself. But I'll tell you, these jets and these tanks, I think are starting to change the calculus for that regime in Moscow. And I think we're about to find a red line. And I don't think we're gonna like when we see it. Okay, Brian, people aren't on the ground. They don't know what what's what. And they don't understand, especially because of all the military equipment and personnel that's been supplied by us and others. Do you have any sense of handicapping this whole thing? Who's winning? Who's losing? Is Putin just got to ride this out? He's going to win it anyway? Or the Ukrainians got enough of our stuff? They're going to win? What's happening? Yeah, bottom line is this is a war of attrition. I think both sides have enough friends in their, their corners, as it were. Like if this were a boxing match, I think right now both sides are laying some pretty serious bloody blows on each other, knocking each other to the ground. 
but they're both still fighting. China is assisting and aiding the Russians along with others like Saudi Arabia. They're all providing the, the money that Russia needs and in some cases the equipment to keep fighting like some computer chips we now know are coming from China into Russia to help them with the missiles and so forth that they need to keep throwing and launching at Ukraine. And of course the Ukrainians, good Lord, they've got our tanks, they've got all kinds of equipment and they have for many, many months now. So they're still fighting manpower, Ultimately, the Russians have more of it, but he's, that is to say, Putin's going to have problems conscripting all of those folks. Until then, they've got this paramilitary group called the Wagner Group. There are, I think, 50 to 100,000 uh, former prisoners that they're collecting from around the world, throwing those guys in Ukraine, fighting on behalf of the Russians. So, so far, this thing's pretty equally nasty. And that's, I think, ultimately why the Biden administration and others are saying, we got to do something to change this because this sucker is getting real expensive and real dangerous. We got to whip this war in the bud and get it done with. That's why I think you're seeing the tanks and, okay. and possibly the planes. Okay, let's pause on this for just a moment because actually that sounds really cool. Horrifying, but kind of cool. You're telling me there's a 50 to 100,000 group of convict mercenaries called the Wagner Group? What? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So the Wagner Group, of course, is all around the world operating on behalf of the Russian uh, government. And they're, they're defending uh, different interests in different places in the world and you know, getting Moscow into bed with, say, African regimes fighting in places like Mali and Burkina Faso. So this group, the Wagner Group, is, is basically opening up prison cells in various parts of the world to include Russia, hiring these guys saying, look, we're gonna give you your freedom and some money, but you gotta go to Ukraine and fight. And yeah, there are tens of thousands of these prisoners that the Russians are now arming and saying, you're cannon fodder, but at least you're not in prison, fight for us. And a lot of guys are signing up for it. This is, this is absolutely fascinating. Okay, now let's move. To, I'm not even getting to close to all the things I want because this stuff is fascinating. Let's move to this red line you were talking about. What is something we can reasonably expect assuming Putin is going to hit the red line? I, I, are, are we talking about a cyber attack like we mentioned earlier? Are we talking about New York City glowing in the dark, God forbid? Are we what are we what's something he would do and could do? Well, he does have good cyber capabilities, and I think that you you are right to say he can shut down things like our power plants, right? So that's obviously a big problem when your hospitals don't have power, your grocery stores don't have power. He has that ability. Now, we have tried to harden our systems, but that's definitely one thing he could do. Uh, you probably have seen some recent attacks uh, at our airports shutting down uh, towers. He could do something like that as well. The big one is around energy, specifically pipelines. We've seen that in the past as well. So Putin does have an ability to, to do some pretty nasty stuff if he finally gets to the point where he thinks he's going to, to lose this war. He can throw a lot at this to include a demonstration of his nuclear power, you know, launching a, 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 an explosion, nuclear explosion over the Black Sea or somewhere in the, the Baltic Sea to just show the world like, look, if you're gonna push me to the point where I lose, we all lose. This ain't gonna just be me that goes down. Yeah, that's what I've been worried about.